with as much as I talk about interviewing skills, it's apparent to me that we still have questions on how to present ourselves in interviews. Today, I've got eight do's and don'ts of interviewing. I love getting to meet new designers and really sitting down to talk shop. Oftentimes that happens in the form of interviews. Over the last five years, I've conducted more interviews than I can count at this point. Some in person, some over the phone, and some just over lunch. It really doesn't matter the format. I found a few common themes I need to share to help ensure that you don't fall into the trap that many still are. Let's just get right into it. Number one, when you sit down at the start of an interview, do ask for or clarify the time schedule. I guarantee the interviewer has a schedule they want to stick to, and your presentation might only be 20 minutes of the hour-long interview. In that scenario, don't speak for 45 minutes straight because it's painful when I need to tell you to wrap up your presentation when there are other things we need to address. Understand your time allotment. Let the interviewer get to the questions they may have for you. Number two, do come prepared with a presentation and understand your narrative or your talking points. It's totally fine if you create a presentation and keynote and then utilize the presenter notes to bullet point your talking points. Don't, however, forget to engage the viewer. No presentation should ever be a discourse. Find a way to interact or re-engage the interviewers as you're presenting. Here's an example. If you've encountered a fairly common issue in your project, ask something like, have you ever encountered this issue before? Or, I'm sure you've seen this in a project before. Even that little break in the presentation to get the interviewer to say, oh yeah, I've seen that, is enough to make sure that they're following along. Remember, your presentation shouldn't just be you speaking the entire time. Engage the interviewer. Number three, if there are logistical questions you need answered, do ask those questions at the appropriate time. Don't assume you've got the position nailed already. Unless the interviewer is opening the door to ask logistical questions like, what is the pay? What are the benefits? What's the PTO, the PTO policy? Don't ask them in the interview. Save them for the recruiter. That's part of what they're there to do and the information they're there to get for you. Don't get caught in the weeds of asking logistical questions when we only have a few minutes to talk shop and talk about design and working together. Number four, I mentioned having a keynote before, right? But it's a reminder that you do want to have a presentation ready. Don't plan on just opening up your last sketch file and scrolling around looking for different artboards. Help yourself look organized, prepared, and ready to present in any meeting by demonstrating those skills here in the interview. It gets painfully, especially when you think you've got an artboard somewhere with that variation and you scroll around for 30 seconds or so is trying to find it and it's just not there. Number five, do a second pass of your resume and don't create it in Word. Why? Again, the people interviewing for the same position have some nice looking resumes, free of grammatical issues or weird fonts. Don't be the lame duck whose resume looks more applicable for an accounting position. Put some charm into it. You're a designer after all. Number six, do have additional projects or pieces to show if the time permits or if the interviewer requests to see something else. Don't forget to prepare those additional pieces as well. If, you, if you're put on the spot to present something else from your portfolio, be ready with talking points as to help you sound capable of articulating your thoughts. This too is a skill that we're hoping to see demonstrated. Number seven, do send a follow-up email in appreciation for the interviewer's time. You think it's a small gesture, but if you don't, I promise you, the person interviewing for the job is doing it. I try to make a habit of giving positive feedback in my response emails, but if you want some bonus tips, ask for specific feedback or critique, meaning say th something along the lines of, you know, I felt comfortable with X part of the presentation, but admittedly, I found that this part of the presentation was a little weak. Do you have any thoughts on how I could improve it? 
I like seeing somebody who's willing to take a critique and willing to get some feedback. And if you don't get the job position, it's going to come and benefit. Lastly, number eight in these interviews, don't push your own time frame. From the hiring manager's perspective, I've already got a lot of red tape I have to work through. When a candidate tells me that they need an answer by the end of the week, it puts unneeded pressure. If we really liked you, I promise we are working our butts off to get you an answer as soon as possible. Here's one more I just thought of as well, and this is especially important for you who are hypercritical of yourself. Never assume you failed an interview. Just because you didn't get the position doesn't mean you failed. Sometimes there are things outside of your control that keep you from getting the position. Sometimes it's just a matter of another candidate did just a little bit better. Don't get down on yourself in those situations. Keep your chin up, and with the feedback that you're asking for, you're gonna be better prepped for your next interview. I'll throw out one last offer out there. If you're preparing for some upcoming interviews and you want some feedback, let's find time to do a mock interview together. I'd be happy to help you identify points of the presentation that are a little weak, or even point out a couple things that might be coming off the wrong way in an interview. If that's of interest to you, feel free to reach out after you subscribe and share the crap out of this episode.